Good evening everybody. Thank you very much for joining in. This is 79th video where we are going to speak about one of the important topics in business combinations, preferably M&A which is known as merger and acquisitions, which is known as earn out accounting. In one of the videos we had produced earlier, we had a word about what do you mean by earn out and how to do earn out. Basically, what is the meaning of earn out? Well, before to start a video, I would like to stress two important facts here. One is that we are in year 2015 when majority of the Indian companies, especially information technology companies and non-information technology companies, they are doing a lot of M&As and a lot of acquisitions. These acquisitions are creating a lot of contingent considerations in the book. Well, for the reference of the pe people who are watching this video, the earn out is nothing but also, also known as the contingent considerations in the books of companies, those who are acquiring the other company. So today we are going to speak about earn out accounting, how to do earn out accounting and in this we are going to very much stressful on a very very important fact in business combination which is known as that earn out accounting can lead to an earning surprise and that is a fact. Well, those who are not aware about these technical term, let me let me just clarify that earning surprise means which is the swing in the PNL. PNL basically there are three part of PNL. Number one which is known as top line. Top line is the sales, number second which is known as middle line, middle line is the earning before interest and tax, third is the bottom line, bottom line refers to the profit after tax, simple. So earn out led to earning surprise, this earning surprise means profit after tax. Now what do you mean by earn out, I am taking an hypothetical example here and uh, I am assuming two companies, assuming Tata Consulting Services which is roughly 10 billion dollar company is buying Infosys which is roughly 9 billion dollar company. Wow, when Tata Consulting Services bought Infosys, at that time Infosys was working on the deal size of roughly 4 billion dollars. So this was the deal size on which Infosys was working on. However, Infosys said to TCS that there is a 90% probability, I am writing again again, that probability of success is 90% and probability of failure is 10%. So 90% probability that you will get a deal. So just hypothetically assuming that out of 4 billion dollar, you have a probability of 3.6 dollar billion or and you have a probability of losing 0.4 dollar business. This is one way of looking at it. Another way of looking at it that 90% chance that you will get 4 billion dollar business and 10% chance that you will get nothing in your pocket. So, but TCS was not very much supporting the argument of Infosys or they are saying that we are not in a sync with Infosys. So, what TCS is saying, okay, let's have an earn out. So, TCS is saying let's have an earn out or contingent consideration. Now, in this TCS is saying if within a stipulated period, assuming the stipulated period is uh, one year, within five, one year, Infosys would fetch, basically now there is no Infosys, it is TCS, TCS would fetch 4 billion dollar of a deal size for on which Infosys was working obviously pre-acquisition, then TCS would pay them 3 billion dollars of additional cash. Please be note that I am referring to a term cash, I am not referring to a term equity shares. So TCS would pay 3 billion dollar of cash to Infosys. Now this is a contingent consideration in the books. Now, how to how to do an accounting? Now, take a one step back. As you may before doing a deal, this, the Infosys, Infosys, the considerations, Infosys was transferring, Infosys was transferring consideration of $9 billion and TCS paid $12 billion. So, TCS would record the goodwill of $3 billion. What do you mean by goodwill? In the earliest videos, we had a word about goodwill. Goodwill is nothing but the amount you would pay it minus you would get the considerations. In case goodwill is less than zero, you would treat this as capital reserve. Now, $3 billion of goodwill, TCS is going to create here in the balance sheet size of, it's, it's an asset basically, I'm sorry for that. So, you are going to create an asset here, goodwill of $3 billion. Now, the goodwill you created, but this goodwill amount is going to increase. How? Because you have $3 billion of contingent cash which you have to pay to Infosys if these deals would happen. So you would do the fair value of, of this earn out. And assuming 
fair value is turning out to be one billion dollars. So the total goodwill recorded here is four billion dollar. Now this one billion of earn out which which TCS recorded that TCS is going to create as a liability in their books. Here one billion. So that here you created the fair value of earn out as an asset. Here you created the here you created the liability as one billion dollar. Now how this led to an earning surprise? As we know that intangibles is of two types. Goodwill is an intangible. Intangibles is of two types. One when the life is limited, and when the life is non-limited. Basically, in simplistic term, when the life is infinite. When the life is limited, these intangibles are going to be amortized over a period of time. And amortization could be of straight line method and could be of written down value method. When these are those who are infinite, they are going to we are going to have impairment testing. Now, since goodwill is an infinite intangible asset, we are going to test, we are going to, be, we are going to treat this as intangible for infinite. And for infinite, we have to do an impairment testing after every reporting period. Now, that reporting period could be, you know, monthly, yearly, whatever, but generally companies are taking yearly. Now, assuming after one year, once you are doing, you are, you are getting a sense that the fair value of this now turns out to be this fair value has increased to 1.5 billion means the probability of having this 4 billion dollar of deal is going up so you would you would change liability by 1.5 billion please note that in this goodwill of this fair value remains intact it cannot be changed and there is a rule in the counting standards whether it is an indian gap it is a us gap that goodwill once created can only be amortized and amortized goodwill cannot be reinstated so if you have a goodwill and you are amortizing the goodwill you cannot reinstate that so assuming this liability increased to 1.5 billion dollars so the liability side would go higher and here in the profit and loss account which is i'm writing debit and credit in the debit 0.5 billion go here next reporting period this 1.5 billion increases to 2 billion dollars here you will record this liability as 2 billion and here you would add further 0.5 billion next reporting period this has increased to 0.5 billion only 0.5 billion which means the probability of having these contracts in the hand has been reduced drastically so you would you would make your current liability as 0.5 billion and here you will book a gain because yes, last time it was 2 billion now it is point uh, now it is 0.5 you would book a gain, book a gain of 1.5 billion dollar henceforth it has been rightly said that goodwill led to an earning surprise to summarize this video i am again stressing the fact once you want to buy like like tcs bought infosys by 12 billion paying 12 billion dollars the consideration transferred is of 9 billion dollar please be note that i am writing here consideration in include all assets it is net of assets and liabilities these all are the considerations 3 billion dollar of goodwill has been created that goodwill is going to be recorded here which is the asset side of TCS now if this includes the earn out of, of 3 billion dollar because that earn out is dependent upon the 4 billion dollar of the deal Inf Infosys is working on that 4 billion dollar of the deal Infosys is working on you created 3 billion dollar of an earn out and please note that this is a fair value the same you are going to create the same oh sorry I am assuming the fair value to be 1 billion 1 billion of, of earn out you would create 1 billion of a liability you are going to create increase if the, if the fair value of the earn out would rise you cannot change the amount in the goodwill but you will create you will add more current liability which would hit the debit side if the fair value of the earn out would decrease then you would reduce the liability and this will go to the credit surprise this will go to the credit side of the pnl henceforth this has been rightly said that the earn outs led to an earning surprise how it will lead to an earning surprise because whether it is a debit side or it is a credit side you cannot take a hedge position of that it's going to hit the three part of your books. Number one, it would hit your middle line. 
which is earning before interest in tax and third second it would hit the profit after tax and third it would hit earning per share which is nothing but basic and diluted and here i am writing abit earning before interest in tax when well, before to wind up the video just to let just just to stress out the fact that just to stress out the fact that middle line top bottom line and earning before interest in tax these all three are going to get hit as for it has been rightly said that earn outs led to earn outs led to the surprise in the earnings and however the very important point i would like to stress here is that the fair valuation of an earn out is dependent so 10 people would have 10 different fair value of an earn out so somebody would do relative valuation some would do contingent valuation some would do discounted cash flow valuation and even in the discounted cash flow cash flow valuation there are various stuffs various discount rates you are going to use so fair valuation of an earn out is extremely different when you go when you are going to have 10 people you would have 10 different kind of fair value of an earn out i would like to thank you for your time to watching the video well from this side i am rahul nagan i am working as a treasurer in excel you are most welcome to contact me at 9198992429780 you can email me you can whatsapp me and again i would like to thank you very much for your video you welcome to share your feedback as well thank you for your time